I mean, as long as you continue to let me have my fun picking off your creatures one by one with Grim Hireling's ability, I'm gonna keep doing it. Hello Daily Drafters and welcome back to the channel for today's Daily Draft. We've got just three drafts left of the format here of Alchemy Horizons Baldur's Gate before we switch over to Dominaria United here very soon. But let's end it on a high note and as I see our rare in the corner of my eye here, I see Hourglass Coven, a card I've yet to play with or against but I know is very good. Six mana, three, three. When it ETBs, draft a card from its spellbook twice, then put them onto the battlefield, and they're all warlocks, and they all get plus one, plus one. So it's six mana for three, three, threes, two of which, like, give you a bunch of great things. <laughs> the beginning of your upkeep, you drain them for two. Um, beginning of your upkeep, they have to discard a card. They lose life unless they sack a permanent or a card. Um, Perpetually gives creatures minus X, minus, minus two, minus one, get a one, one. I mean, this card is busted. It's a shame we have to pass the Grim Bounty, but I am totally fine starting with an Hourglass Coven here. And now, unfortunately, they're stick together, but you know what? This hasn't, I don't know why this was in this set, to be honest. It seems like it should have been in Zendikar Rising and then just wasn't. Um, Bone Collar Cleric could be because we have Hourglass Coven playing a Bone Collar, Hourglass Coven playing a Bone Collar Cleric might not be a bad idea in case this dies. Um, but there's a Kaga Shadow Arch Druid, which is also pretty good with the Hourglass Coven. I think I'm going to do this because if we want a Bone Collar Cleric, I think we're going to be able to get one. This pack is just underwhelming in general, so I'm going to take the Kaga here. Then we see Ambitions cost, draw three, lose three. Four mana sorcery. There's a gate and a sewer plague. I think I'm just going to take the sewer plague. I'm pretty sure I'd very, very highly likely want to be black in this draft. So we're going to take the black removal spell. So that we can try to play the hourglass coven. Um, there are just some cards that I think to myself, why, why is that a card? Why did they print that? And this is one of them. <laughs> Um, Displacer Kitten could be fun with this whole kind of blur thing, but I think we're past that. There's, um, Sepulchre Ghoul and Hill Giant Herd Gorger and Wild Shape. Wild Shape is very good for protecting the Hourglass Coven. Uh, Hill Giant Herd Gorger is just another six drop, but if we do play green-black, then there's potential we can have access to some pretty good ramp. I think I'll take... My first herd gorger over a wild shape here. And now we have you meet in a tavern and another Kaga along with Juridic Ritual. And again, we are playing best of three here today. So I would like access to a you line up the shot if I'm in green. But a second Kaga seems quite good. Got to lower our curve here soon, but we have time to do that. Summon undead. Um, you know what? I think... Summon Undead is a card this deck really, really wants. I would really like a gate as well, but I have to make sure I get my first copy of Summon Undead. Um, yet again, not particularly lowering our curve in any sense of the word. So I guess I'll take an Edder Cap and maybe just put it into the sideboard. Um, I might play more than 40 cards in this deck because of how much mill we already have. But we'll, we'll get there when that comes. We're only seven picks in here. So we got time to figure that out. Uh, Horde Robber Lantern Basilisk. I don't really like Horde Robber or Basilisk, but at least this trades with things. This is ramp. So maybe Lantern is good enough. Um but I have to make sure I secure at least a couple of two drops here. So we'll take this two drop. Uh, 
and really lean into the whole green-black self-mill kind of thing. Because even if we mill the coven, we have a summon undead to get it back. We have two kagas to get it back. Um, would not mind playing a druidic ritual in this deck. Dragonborn's pretty good with herd gorger, but that's it. Pit trap is whatever. I'll just take the dragonborn, but I'll move it back if we get enough cards that make it matter. So what is this deck looking for? I think this deck is looking for Underseller Myconids. Probably two would be outstanding. Uh, maybe a Dreadlinorm. I've got a copy of Ritual here. There is a Gray Slot. In this kind of deck, this might be good enough, but I think Ritual's just better. Um, at least the first copy of it. If we were presented with that pack again after already having a Ritual, I'd probably take Gray Slot. Uh, and it definitely needs two drops. So, Moon Druid, I guess. I don't think we're necessarily going to be lacking for card advantage. So I'm going to take the Moon Druid and potentially not play it. But we can entertain that option. You know, maybe a... Uh, not a bad sideboard option to have a Baleful Beholder as well. Another Ritual. I don't think I'm willing to play two. Now let's see what we open up in pack two. Sworn to the Legion. Not really a card I have found to make work in this format. Another Kaga, but three is quite a bit. I think I'm just going to take the Owlbear. Would love to wheel another Summon Undead here. Or if this and or this doesn't wheel, then either one of these, I guess, is acceptable. But I'm going to take the Owlbear. Our curve is... Really not great, but um, we got time. We got time. It'll it'll all work out. It'll all work out in the end, right? Never didn't have it. <laughs> I was wondering, you know, we had this in our last draft video, and I was like, hmm, we're in green-black. I wonder if we can find a Babala Saga. Well, we did. <laughs> There's also a Vampire Spawn and an Owlbear, both of which I would like to have access to. But I'm going to take Babala Saga here. Um, now we're highly in the market for um, Pilgrim's Eyes. Yeah, this deck looks to be... Like a lot of fun. Like a good old green-black deck in most limited formats here. You know, a little bit of self-mill, some powerful cards, green cards, Coven, Owlbear, Herd... I mean, gosh, this deck is doing things. Verdant Rejuvenation. Seek X creature enchantments or, or planeswalkers where X is the highest mana value on creatures you control. Put them onto the battlefield. Is that good? Um, it's only good in... I mean, we have a high curve right now. There's also just Prosperous Innkeeper, and like that's really tempting. There's also Gilsworn Prowler, which is really tempting. Band Together, Vampire Spawn. Oh man, this is... This is tough. I think I'm going to land on Innkeeper as Ramp and Life Gain, but gosh, that was a tough pack. Skilled Nurturer is ramp. We don't have any dragons, but it is ramp. There's also just band together. This is ramp as well, but again, no dragons. Maybe I just take band together over the Nurturer, but ramping from two to four in this deck is quite important. Babala Saga and Kaga. Babala Saga Kaga. <laughs> so I'm going to take the Nurturer for that reason, for ramping, ramping from two to four. I think we're just going to take the two drop in Ghoul here. It's not great right now, but I mean, I need two drops because one of the ways this deck loses is, you know, red, white, double team. <laughs> That's how it loses. Circle of the Landru is actually pretty good in this deck. Return target land to graveyard to the hand when it dies, and when it ETBs, you may mill four. 
We're going to take that. Another Nurturer over Horror Bard or Ettercap. I think that's fine. Um, definitely interested in playing more than 40 cards in this deck. I mean, we have Landruid to mill four. We have Druidic Ritual to mill three. We have Card Draw and Babala Saga. We have this that mills two every time it attacks. We have Summon Undead that mills three. So if we played 40, we're going to run out of cards in a hurry. So this is one of those very, very rare occasions where I think playing more than 40 is probably correct. This is probably fine to run. These are probably fine to run. Dragonborn's probably not bad. I mean, we could technically run all of these. But do we really want to is the question. It'll be a very interesting deck build, to say the least. All right, now there is Ramp and Follow the Tracks as opposed to Iron Golem. Wow, it's a good red. Ambergris and Hobgoblin Captain here. Armor of Shadows is good protection for our creatures. I probably would not mind playing a copy of that. But having Follow the Tracks as a three-mana ramp spell is really important. Kaga did come back. Is three too many? I know it's legendary. What's our two drops looking like? We're not actually that bad at twos right now. I'm going to take the third one, to be honest. Navigation Orb. I don't think so. Manticore, Eyes of the Beholder, Pit Trap, Sylvan Shepherd, and Hakor. I mean, we could play like all of these cards. But we whiffed on this pack, unfortunately. There's some good cards here Uthgart Fury, Battlecry Goblin, Dragon's Fire, Sea Tower Imprisonment, all outstanding cards. Priest of Ancient Lore, quite good too. But we have to take the saddest scaled nurturer in the world. It's another one to go with our three dragons. Apparently we have three now. <laughs> ah, dragonborn. Oh, and double nurturer. Okay, well, we can use this to cast another nurturer, I guess. But yeah, I kind of whiffed on that open pack opening. Grim Hireling, four mana, three, two. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create two treasures. Pay a black mana sacrifice, X treasures, target creature gets minus X minus X till end of turn. It's that, or Walrus as ramp, or Prowler, or armor. We don't really have any other combos with that. It's not really a combo. I mean, if it's just whenever creatures deal combat damage, turns it into a removal spell. That seems very good, right? That has to be good. Let's take that. Now there's a Herd Gorger, another Follow the Tracks, Deadly Dispute. Deadly Dispute doesn't seem particularly great in this deck, um, so I might just take another Herd Gorger here over another Follow the Tracks. So let's do that. Prowler. I've been looking to find access to one of these. We finally got our first, so that's good. And then we could just swoop up this pack, say thanks, nice to see you, and see you next time. <laughs> and call it a day, but unfortunately that's not how this works. We have to take only one of these. Does it have to be Vampire Spawn? I mean, Saravok is good, but we have so many good cards in the 4 and 5 drop slot that I probably just want to take Vampire Spawn. Yeah, I think it has to be that. Shambling Ghast is a great pickup here. Love to see Shambling Ghast come down early. Grim Wanderer, Shepherd, Moon Druid. I think I'll take Grim Wanderer. We have a good amount of creature. Whoa, 26 creatures. Hello. Uh, yeah, let's take Grim Wanderer. We'll be trading. Vampire Spawn number two. Love to see it. Now, I know the argument for p playing more than 40 cards. 
um, makes things like Baba Lasaka and Hourglass Coven more rare to see in your deck because they are now one of 50 instead of one of 40. But I think it's still important that we play more than 40 because of how much mill we have. I guarantee if we play 40, we went through five games, let's say, we would mill probably in one of them. <laughs> uh, we'd like mill our deck, which is not good. Um, probably have a couple of cuts we could make here. I don't really like Sylvan Shepherd, even in this scenario. Manticore as well. Dragonborn's not bad. We have, we could main deck a Beholder as well, but we do have Double Herd Gorger, Owlbear. Ettercap can probably go to the sideboard. Hookhor can probably go to the sideboard. Now the curve doesn't look so bad. I think the Beholder makes the Dragonborn better. Could probably play an Imp too, I guess. Right? So, oops. So I think three of these is fine. Um, this is 30 cards. I think this all looks okay. I mean, I'm probably fine running this many. Now, 17 lands is, you know, the, the traditional amount to run. And in a 40 card deck, that's 42.5% of your deck. So in order for 30 um, cards to be 42.5% of your deck, no, in order for, let's see, so 30 divided by 50 so if we ran 20, 20 21 lands? Twenty-two lands in this setup would be almost exactly the same ratio that we usually run in a limited deck. So eleven of each probably seems fine. And that gives us an extra 12 cards to deal with. Um, mill 3 off Summon Undead. Mill 2 however many times off of this. Um, mill 2... Mill 3 cards off of Druidic Ritual twice. And... Circle the Land Druid Milling. I mean, that's a lot of mill. So we want to make sure we have enough. Yeah, all right, the rare 52 card deck, and we're gonna run it right into the best of three Q here. Let's hop right in. All right, and a quick match against Mezzanine, which you can't see right now because here's my beautiful face, but now you see Mezzanine. Um, yeah, it's slow, but I hope they don't go red and then Cobalt Warcaller. <laughs> it's funny how that works, isn't it? Red White Aggro, I said that's what's going to hurt us. Here comes Genasi Rabble Rouser, and then they're going to get the double team. That's close enough. We're about to get absolutely stomped this game. <laughs> like, we're going to get trashed. <laughs> this is not the matchup we wanted to see in round one. I'm probably just trading this for Hobgoblin Captain, except for the fact that they're going to give something haste here that's going to make it um, impossible to block. 
Boy, if I could just make it to the Hourglass Coven, that would be great. See if they have a trick. No? Okay. Fine by me. I mean, a 4-mana four 4-4? Four four? I, I guess. But lands are almost more important here. Gosh, as much as I want Baba Lasaka, we just have to make it to these two cards. Oh, man. This only gains Death Touch on attacks. This has Double Team. We're going to have to sideboard out of this plan real quick here. Do they have the combat trick? Yuck. <laughs> okay. This is like literally the absolute worst case scenario for our deck right now. Um. If we do that, we have to chump. But then maybe next turn we could survive if we mill a land. So we have to mill a land here. And of course we completely missed. So that just straight up means we lose. Alright, well that was a ton of fun. <laughs> okay, in sideboards we really don't have much of a way to sideboard. Like, at all. <laughs> this seems awful. Um, we can make our deck a little bit more streamlined down low. So, like, kind of get rid of some of these expensive cards here. Probably a little slow in this matchup. Same with this. Everything else seems okay. So then we can get rid of probably two lands here. So 20 out of 46 gets us 43%. So we could probably go down one more. Go down a swamp. So 19 out of 45 is just barely under the same percentage that 17 lands gets us. So. Yep, all right, well, let's run this up against this buzzsaw again. Well, can't keep it, <laughs> so this has been great. Um, it's going to be one of these two. Babala Saga or Grim Hireling? I think it's going to be the Hireling. Because they had Improvised Weaponry and that's so bad against this. Please, no Kobold War Caller on one. Okay, they didn't have a play, so that's good. Okay, now they have a play. So they have one of two things in hand here. Um... Try to get that that value here. Can attack, mill two, and then play a land to cast a permanent spell from there. Alright, so they have you hear something on watch. We can no longer cast or play those, unfortunately. <laughs> So that sucks, but we'll go ahead and play Owlbear. 
They still have their protection spell. I think they have Blessed Hippogriff in hand. Or Patriarch's Humiliation, one of the two. Would have been nice to uh, be able to get that vampire spawn off the top. So we'll go in here, and then we'll play Herd Gorger, and we're starting to stabilize here. Okay, I don't care about that too much anymore. So they're going to give one of these indestructible, more than likely. Or they're going to humiliation, so, I mean, it doesn't really matter which one we do, because they're just going to give one of them indestructible here. Looks like it'll be the Paladin. Here comes Hippogriff. Okay. Unfortunately, do not have a way to get the cards. We didn't find any Pilgrim's Eyes with this. Um, gosh, this is just a streamlined red-white beat you down deck. <laughs> Here come the lands. We're playing about an average of 16.8 um, lands in this deck right now. Okay. Still trades for both of those. So at least there's that. Yeah. Okay. We could attack with this. We'd probably just trade it. I have to reevaluate this deck and see if Baba La Saga even has a way for us to get three cards off of that. <laughs> I'm not sure we have a way. Do we have any land in here right now? We do. I'm going to decline because we don't really have a way to, um, to get anything back right now and I don't want to mill some of our better cards. There's there's no value for us having anything in the graveyard right now.
Yeah, yeah, this didn't really work out for us so well. They have eight, so... Okay, we go to 10. Null hunting party. Yeah, so we get trashed. Um, it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Dragon's Fire, maybe? Yep. Don't think we have a way out of this at this point. Both of these are lethal. We only have one draw step, and they can jump if they want. So if they attack with Red Dragon and Guardian, it looks like we will fall in the first... Round of this one to a streamlined red white deck that I said I hope we don't play against. So, yep, that won't do it. All right, see you in the next one then. Wait, 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 don't fast forward. We all know that the YouTube interface is too imprecise and you're gonna skip too far and you're gonna have to go back. Your thumbs are too big. It's all just not worth it. Great, now that you're here and I've got your attention, why don't you go ahead and hit that red subscribe button right there underneath this video? Yeah, it's it's right about right there or so. Yeah, if you've made it this far, clearly you're enjoying something. And a subscription to the channel is an absolutely free way to support the content I make and assist in the growth of the channel. Thanks so much for your consideration. And now, back to the draft. All right, playing against Soup here <laughs> with a keepable hand. Again, gotta hope they do not start on Mountain. Uh, planes could go one way or the other. Let's see if they get priority here. They did not, so they do not have one of those two in hand. Let's find a land, please. Ugh. Moon Druid blocks Dust Guard very well. Priest of Ancient Lore is a 3-1. Three, 3-1, one. Three, one, gain a life draw card. Pretty good. Miss another land drop here. And I guess we just do this. This draft is not going our way. I mean, I can play Innkeeper. Um, and then next turn, if, if this survives, we can do a 4-drop. But if I draw a land, I'm probably just dropping one of these four drops, I think. Okay. We do have a treasure now. Ah. Uh. All right, so this gets us some... I know I have to use a treasure to do it, but it's going to get us some some life here. It gets us three life, and next turn we kind of have five mana if we want it, in a way. I would like to use this treasure on Babala Saga activation, because it does count as an artifact. 
that's the goal, but ideally more than two lands would be great too. That'll likely kill Innkeeper. They're going to sacrifice Shambling Ghast. All right. All right, well, I guess we just gotta hope this survives into next turn. I mean, I don't really wanna be sacrificing a land either. Um, so that kinda sucks. But ideally if we draw three cards, we'll find another one or two, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have six mana if we want it, but only one of which is black. This is very slow, but it might it might just have to do <laughs> right now. Depends on if they're able to push through any more damage. Oh, I don't have another one. Hmm. I see. Who needs lands, right? Um... I will mill three. We'll hit one land. I think I have to take the swamp. And then we could take Herd Gorger for like next turn. We could take Innkeeper, give us another treasure, another activation off of Babalo Saga. We could can't cast Innkeeper if we take the swamp though. In fact, we can't cast any of this if we take the Swamp. So we could take the Forest and Innkeeper. I feel like we're so close to turning the corner, but we're just struggling to do so.
So we're going to have to use Babala Saga on the Herd Gorger right now. Pretty much. To get any value out of it, I think. So what I'm going to do is do this. Do this. We're going to draw a bunch of cards here, and hopefully we draw like a swamp. So we can actually cast some of these cards. Okay. So now we have access to six mana here. So we can do a Kaga and a Basilisk. I want to make sure that we get some sort of value out of this. If they kill that one, that's fine, because we have another. And then we can do Basilisk here. Having a Death Toucher is nice. Drawing a or gaining a bunch of life here. Drowning in card advantage. That is a problem. Unfortunately. Gosh, Unicorn is so good in this format. Especially installed boards like this. Do they have a combat trick here? Again, if they do, we have another. So, uh, they have an onboard combat trick. Okay. When's Dominaria United coming out again? <laughs> These are things I need to know. How about a 7-7? Seven, seven? And how about a 1-1? One, one? Okay. Yeah, they're another aggressive deck. I mean, we've managed to kind of somewhat stabilize here. Um, we have two forests in hand, so I'm going to return a swamp, and then can get Herd Gorger back. The one that is not perpetually a 2-1. <laughs> Go ahead and play that swamp. And I can play the Imp here. But this gives us some card card advantage going into next turn. Probably just going to attack with it and trade it with whatever they want to trade it with. Oh, that's nice. Should have played one of those swamps. <laughs> so this lets us sacrifice up to three permanents. So what we can do is we can sacrifice the ghast, make a treasure... And the next turn, sacrifice a treasure, a creature, and a land to draw three more. They can blink vampire spawn, I guess. Priest of Ancient Lore, that's probably a little bit better. <laughs> All right, let's see if they want to trade. It'll gain death touch. They could also just take it. I mean, they don't really have any reason not to. Go to blockers. I 
Again, we do have to find a way to win. But winning's overrated. It's all about the, uh, the friends you made along the way. I think I'd rather kill the double teamer, to be honest. Come on. Well, let's play another one. Then we have access to that again. <laughs> Forget it has to survive to actually do that. So let's play the Guild Sworn Prowler here. Gain another life. Play another land. Into the turn and... <laughs> Yeah, the whole mill game is certainly a thing that we're looking at here. They have the ability to activate Unicorn twice, which could just be a big problem. We have double death touch though. Still have a couple of really nice cards left in the deck, too. Grim Hireling, our six mana 3 3 Warlock Lord. Oh, God. That's a problem. Um, start here. Go to combat. If we attacked here, it would trade for like a Priest of Ancient Lore or a Vampire Spawn. We would draw a card though. Get Priest of Ancient Lore. Cry one, draw a card. That doesn't seem great. That's worse. We are somehow at 32 life. All right, here comes unicorns. Probably should have held the Death Toucher back, to be honest. Oh, just four mana to give their Black Dragon Vigilance. That's, that's still not bad. All right, no other plays. So what have I attacked with these two? Do they have good blocks? I would be fine trading either one for a black dragon. And as far as the other creatures, they don't have good blocks. So let's do this. Yeah, let's get in there with these two.
Okay. It's fine. That's also fine. Then we can end the turn. Still have that darn unicorn. That might be worth killing over the black dragon. Depends. Yep. Blocks, pass to damage, go to 21. I don't think it is worth killing over the Black Dragon. So now they're at 9. I mean. We can kind of just go a little crazy here. Do we have lethal? I mean, they're getting priority. It could just be ghoul. But what if we attacked with everything? They block, 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 block. Take one, two, three, four, five, six. And no, it's not lethal. So I'm going to do this. And then win? Yep, guess so. Okay. All right, black white value here. Um Edder cap against black dragon. Manticore. No, Manticore doesn't seem particularly great. Um, Eyes of the Beholder, pretty expensive removal. Their creatures are not very expensive. Pit Trap could just be a nice little roadblock against them. Um, so if I did that, anything seem particularly bad? Is Beholder good? We see we did see Minimus Containment, so Beholder seems fine. Four mana, one four, follow the tracks, ritual, probably cut a ritual, put in two cards, take out one. Um, that would put us at, so 22 lands out of 54 cards is a little, it's almost like running 16 lands, so we need to probably cut one more card. Wait, why did Manticore not make it out? What did I cut instead? Ritual and Mantic. Should have brought in Edder Cap, Pit Trap, brought out Ritual. Was Manticore just in the deck? Or are we running 52? Maybe we're running 52. 50 th so 22 divided by 53 is just a barely. It's like, yeah, I think this is about where we want to be. I think we can run it back like this. They're still sideboarding. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. They're likely to put us on the draw, and in doing so, we find a hand that is unkeepable. I mean, any untapped land is scaled nurturer, but pff, that's not great. So we'll keep this and put back Summon Undead, I think. Okay, this is a recipe for a quick loss here. <laughs> a mulligan into no plays on two or three.
We didn't see blue from them last game. Double three one. Hmm. Alright, something we can play. That is not something we can play. <laughs> Alright, well, this was a quick game too. <laughs> we have plenty of two drops. Gonna blink the priest. Drew these out of order. <laughs> um, I guess we just play that. If they kill it, we go to two and then we die. All right. Well, maybe we can double spell next turn, but either way, we're still facing down three lethal threats and they have protection. Oh no, Unicorn, that'll, that should definitely do it, right? Hello, lands! <laughs> we're playing less than the average of 17, okay. Well, that was fun. Great game one, even more thrilling of a game two. Is Shepard good? I mean, like not, not great. I mean, it seems fine how we how we played it. We just kept a bad hand, mulliganed, and then had to keep six, and that's where we were. All right, and yet another bad hand that we will keep. Here comes unicorn. Close enough. Black. Not what I meant. <laughs> Alright, now we are locked out. If we don't draw a swamp. Okay, well, here we are. Doing the things. You gonna make me trade this for one of these? I really don't want to, but what else are we doing here? Hopefully they're missing land drops too. All right, they are. And we found a black. Off we go. All right, mana efficiency. I suppose this is what we're playing. Vampire spawn, yep. Makes that one pretty good. And another swamp. All right, all right. We can do things now. We could even maybe attack with Kaga. Okay. Now this is kind of all in that they don't have minimus containment. Because if they do, this is very bad. <laughs> That's fine, I think. Okay, that's also fine.
probably don't want to double block into an onboard trick in Spiked Pit Trap. But you do you. Let's see. Because we have Pit Trap, I'm willing to do this here. Get the clean two for one while we can. Um, and if this Hill Giant Hergorger ever dies, we have a clean way to get it back. All right, they found their extra land, so we're both off to the races here. They have six cards that are not lands in their deck, in their hand, though. So that could be a problem for us. All right, the monk is likely to get the counter now. We have yet to see our six mana bomb. I would love to see that hit the battlefield. Don't do it. Don't get rid of her, Gorger. No, and it's perpetual, so summon undead is infinitely worse now. And now we can still hold up Spike Pit Trap here. A splashed OG. I'm probably fine blocking with this as opposed to attacking, to be honest. We have a lot of very powerful cards in our deck that we could find a way to put into the graveyard, but currently we don't have any of them there. If I could find a way to have this die in a different way, I could give that minus one, minus one, and we'd still get the value out of it. But we can get a treasure here, which could make Babala Saga better at some point. That won't do it. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, in the turn here, we have so many powerful cards in this deck, and have not quite found them.
Okay. Second spell, they're gonna use OG. I mean, I could have killed that in response. Choosing not to cast their second spell. Interesting. Oh, man, here just the lands are flooding through here now. We've got four in the yard, Eight on the battlefield and one in the hand. So we have 13 lands. We are running 22, so I mean, I guess the, the odds aren't super crazy here. Yep. They're starting to pull away from us, right? In the developing portion of the game, we've drawn like three cards a turn, basically, and basically <laughs> hit like six lands out of those. So why are they choosing to not cast their second spell each turn? Because I can target what they target with OG with Spike Pit Trap? They had, do have Black Dragon in the deck, so that's not a bad draw. Still hoping we mill our six drop. Holy moly. <laughs> what is going on? Uh, what do I want to kill here? Honestly, I probably want to kill the monk. It might just be this. Because we're going to play a 5-3. We could get back Kaga, but like that doesn't seem good enough. I want to get back one of our bombs with Summon Undead. So go ahead. We'll see if Black Dragon comes down here at some point. At least we have the Edder Cap to kill it. That is a problem <laughs> because of how many lands they have. I might use Pit Trap on that, because their attacks are insane. If they want them to be. And no blocks. Alright, I think I have to do this. <laughs> as bad as it feels. Do they have protection? Please don't tell me they have protection. Well, in a way, that is protection. Yeah, they were just saving that to do that. So, yeah, that play probably just won them the game. Good play. Good play, opponent. 
You got us. You definitely got us there. Here are the cards that we're looking for. Owlbear into Hourglass Coven. Yes, please. All right, draft them twice. What do we want? Begin of each upkeep, they lose three unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. Begin of your upkeep, minus two, minus one. Warlocks, that's not good enough. So let's do this one. And, ooh, can I interest you in killing their whole board? <laughs> How, like, why is this card <laughs> reasonable? <laughs> the funny part is we can chump with this and then get it back. They can activate this again, so we can do this, we can do this, and we can do this. We could also trade here and again get it right back. That seems so busted, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get it back. <laughs> Sorry, opponent. <laughs> Decline to mill and then bring back Hourglass Coven and call it game. All right, one and one. See if we can get the trophy. Nope, can't go for a trophy. Let's try to get this 2-1 here. All right, match three here with an unkeepable hand. Got to start with the mulligan. And keep... Holy, why did I keep this? All right, well, I guess we're gonna lose. I just, I'm instinctively keeping six card hands because, I mean, I didn't think they would be two four drops and three six drops, but they are. So we're gonna start this one down a game here very quickly. Oh, they missed a land though, so at least there's that. They are getting priority, so it could be protection for their dust guard, but I will trade here, or at least try to. It is protection for their dust guard. They did find their land, and we didn't, so go ahead. <laughs> They're probably thinking, oh my gosh, they have three lands and six cards in hand, they can't cast a single card? Yeah, it's true. It's very true. All right, we go to six, and then we play a creature, they kill it, and then we die. <laughs> We're not dead yet. Now we're dead. <laughs> okay, well that was a fun game one, wasn't it? Another black-white proactive deck. What's new? Um, Beholder, they could have Minimus Containments. I mean, we just, we just need to keep a better hand. That's all we gotta do. <laughs> I mean, we mulliganed to a hand that had two lands, 
and a total combined mana value in hand of like 28. <laughs> All right, we'll be on the play, thank you. And this is slightly better. Not outstanding, but slightly better. Can still kill something. That's a good draw. No priority. It tells me no um no one of those two white cards there. They can get the double team here, but they're gonna pay for it on the backswing if they do. Kill that so I can get the treasure here. I can go ahead and create two treasures. Ooh. All right. Okay. Only as a sorcery. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> that sucks. I can kill both of their creatures here. And then get two more treasures. So let's do that one. There's plenty of bunch of X ones for me to pick off here. They do get a treasure out of this, but now they can no longer cast Vladimir and Godfrey out of the yard. Yeah, just a bunch of creatures I don't really want to trade with. And another soldiers. Okay. I'm mean, just going to keep picking off their creatures while you let me. I'm just trading... Like nothing for all of your cards. Can't play Ghoul if we do it this way, but... It's probably fine. Because now we can get in here, and if they don't want us to do it again, they have to block. Alright, they'll just let us do it again, I guess. So we'll just end that turn there. I mean, we'd take five on the backswing again if we want. That's probably fine. All right, does Hireling go down finally? Nope. Now it does. <laughs> Funny story, bro. <laughs> All right. We'll get in here, get more treasures, and just gonna keep them. Yeah. Herd Gorger. Yeah, why don't we just do this? So sacrifice two treasures. 
to that. <laughs> God, Grim Hireling for the win. They go to four, get two more. <laughs> sure, why not? Pay a treasure, that's fine. <laughs> okay, well that worked out very nicely, obviously. <laughs> um, Grim Hireling is insane against their deck. Have not seen any flyers yet, so Edder Cap is not great. Pit Trap a little too expensive. Sylvan Shepherd can like gain the life when it attacks or something. Gaining life is decent against them. I think how it was was kind of fine. We just have to kind of get a good opening hand. That's really what we're banking on here, I think. Well, we've had worse, so we'll keep this one. Hopefully we draw a two-drop. Prosperous Innkeeper would be outstanding. Nope. Okay. Three powered flyer. Don't like to see that. I'm gonna go here because it blocks Dust Guard very well. Okay, still blocks that well enough. Dragonborn is a 4-4 now. So I'm going to do that while the getting is good. And just going to have to make sure that this nefarious imp doesn't poke us to death. Well, that's not great. <laughs> Hello. Fortunately, we don't really have good attacks to make this any good. And no other ways to get treasure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this and Sepulcher Ghoul, and maybe next turn we have a good enough of attack. What I'm going to do here is end the turn, goes over there, this is on the stack, and then I'm going to sack it to make this bigger for the turn. Do we just have to summon undead and hope we hit something good? Grim Hireling is busted if they let us let us through here though. Yeah, they know they kind of have to do it that way. Okay. We are on a slow, kind of not a slow clock, a fast clock with this imp. They also did just top something. Probably a land, I would assume. And now here goes Hireling. Okay. 
All right, all right, all right. Okay, I think we have to spike something off of Summon Undead. It's about our only shot here. Hmm. That's a perpetual dead card. You could do a 5-3 or a 3-2. Nothing helps against the flyer. This is like our only potential chance at having a chance here. Can't attack with spawn because they're just going to bounce it. Alright, down goes Hireling again, I guess. It's amazing what a 3-1 three, three flyer can do over the course of a game here. Yep, there's Hireling again. Nope. No attacks, and the turn. All right, go to one. Come on, deck. Got something on top again. We have to find something here. Bond does save us. If they let us cast it. They might be smart enough to not let us cast it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. However, if we did this and then this, can we cast Spawn? <laughs> Innkeeper. Followed by Kaga would leave us with a treasure plus two treasures plus a land. So we can do that. So innkeeper. Kaga. Vampire spawn. <laughs> that was a roundabout way to um find a, a way to survive a turn. Okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> GG. All right. One and two. I thought this deck was better than that. Seemed It was a fun deck. I mean, these, these kind of, we're at the point in the format where we try to just want to have a little fun. Sometimes it doesn't go well, but we did some sweet things. That game with Grim Hireling was pretty fun. So, one and two, but all good is in, all's good in the world here, and we've got two drafts left of the format. Hopefully we'll see you for those. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end of this video. Uh, on our end screen, we've got Baldur's Gate trophy drafts and our last upload in case you missed it. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I will see you next time for your daily draft. Mm -hmm.